Lesson two. So your learning target is I will recognize a digit represents 10 times the value of what it represents in the place to its right. So we're still talking about place value. And I want you to notice that today the problems that I want you to do first are all the multiplication problems in one, two, three. And then I want you to do number four and number six. So you're going to notice that when I'm going through the problems, I'm not going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to go in this order. One and two and three, all the multiplication. Number four, number six, and then I'm going to go back. All right, so let's start right here with number one. All right, so you can see that number one A is a multiplication problem. As you did during the lesson, label and represent the product or quotient by drawing disk on the place value chart. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is label the place value chart. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to go ahead and label each of these, um, each of these columns. And then we're going to come back and check and see if we have the same labels. Okay, so let's check and make sure that we have the same columns or the same labels. So I have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and millions. So each of so if I have ten times two thousands, I'm going to go ahead and represent my two thousands. Here's one, here's two. So if I'm going to multiply it times ten, that means each of these is going to be represented ten times. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10. So that's 1 times 10. Here's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 2 times 10. Okay, so if I have 2 times 10, now I have how many thousands? Well, here's 10 and here's 20. So now I have 20 thousands. Well, I know that if I have a group of 10 that I can bundle them and I can move them to the right because I know that whatever I multiply times 10 has the same value as the digit to its right. So if I have a thousand or excuse me, 10 thousands, then that equals one 10,000. And this 10 thousands equals one 10,000. So now I have two 10 thousands. Okay, so 10 times 2 thousands equals 20 thousands, which is the same thing as 2 10 thousands. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at B. So again, we're going to label all of our place value charts. So I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to label them. I want you to label them with me. Okay, so I labeled it just like last time. So ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions. So this time I have ten times three ten thousands. So I'm going to start with my three ten thousands. One, two, three. Now it says I'm going to multiply each of these times ten. So I want you to pause the video and I want you to represent what it looks like when you multiply each of these ten thousands times ten and let's come back and check together. Okay. So, as you can see, I have taken each of my three ten thousands and I have multiplied them times ten. So now instead of having three ten thousands, now I have thirty ten thousands. So we have learned that we can bundle groups of ten, and here I have three groups of ten, and I can move these to the hundred thousands place. So for each of these groups of ten, I can put 100,000. So I've got three groups of 10, so I'm going to have three hundred thousands. So 30 ten thousands is the same thing as three hundred thousands. Now, 1C is a division problem. So we're going to come back to that one. So we're going to skip it from now, and we're going to go ahead and do these two top problems in number two. So we're going to solve this expression by writing the solution in unit form and in standard form. So we're going to kind of move away from the model. The model is our place value chart, and we're going to look at this in a little bit more of just a, a unit form. So if I have 10 times 6 tens, so if I had my 6 tens, just like I did in my place value chart, what happened when I multiplied it times 10? Well, I ended up with 60 tens. Well, if I have six, think about my place value chart for a minute. So if I had 
ones, tens, hundreds. So if I had 60 tens, that means that I have six groups of tens. Well, if I can bundle each of those groups of 10 and move them to the hundreds place, how many hundreds would that be? Well, that would be six. And then I would have no tens and no hundreds. So 60 tens is the same thing as six hundred. Let's try one more. So if I have seven hundreds and I multiply them times 10, well, if I'm thinking about my place value chart and I've got ones, tens, hundreds, in this case, I'm going to have to go to thousands. So I've got ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. Well, if I've got seven hundreds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I multiply each of these times 10, how many hundreds will that be? Well, that'll end up being 70 hundreds. Well, for each of these hundreds, when I multiply them by 10, for each hundred, how many thousands will I have once I bundle the tens? Well, when I multiply by 10, each of these is going to get end up moving to the thousands place. I'm going to end up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 thousands. No hundreds, no tens, no ones. So 70 hundreds is the same as 7 thousand. Hopefully you're starting to see a pattern. So we're going to skip the next three because they're division. We're going to come back to them. Just because we do these first doesn't mean that we don't do the division. It just means that we're going to do the multiplication first and come back to the division if we have time. All right, this time we're going to solve each expression by writing the solution in unit form and in standard form. So we've got four tens and three ones times ten. So let's look at this in a place value chart for a second. All right, so I've got ones, tens, hundreds. So I've got four tens, one, two, three, four, and I've got three ones, one, two, three. Well, if I multiply these times 10, if you're starting to figure out when you multiply something times 10, you're basically just moving the whole group to the right. So four tens times 10 is actually how many hundreds? Four hundreds, right? So this would be four hundreds and then three ones times ten. If I move these three to the right, now I have one, two, three tens. So how do I write four hundreds, three tens, and zero ones in standard form? Four hundred thirty. All right, let's try one more together. All right, so we've got two hundreds and three tens. So let's go ahead and do ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. So ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands. So I'm starting with two hundreds and three tens. And I'm multiplying all of this times ten. So when I multiply it times ten, I'm basically moving it to the right. So Two hundreds times ten is the same thing as two thousands. Three tens times ten is basically three hundreds. So what would that look like in standard form? So I've got two thousands now, three hundreds, no tens, no ones. So that will be 2,300. I want you to try to do the last one all by yourself. Pause the video and then come back and check with me. If you get stuck, you can always press play and I'll walk you through it. But try to do it by yourself. Okay, so hopefully you tried to do this all by yourself. I'm going to go ahead and draw a place value chart just to kind of explain it to you. But you didn't have to do it with a place value chart. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do it all in your head. All right, so let's see, we have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, and then I have ten thousands. So I have seven thousands, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundreds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So when I multiply these seven thousands times ten, now I'm going to have seven 
10 thousandths. And when I multiply the 8 hundredths times 10, now I have 8 thousandths. So what does that look like in standard form? Well, I have no hundreds, no tens, and no ones. So that is 78,000. All right, now let's take a look at number four. It says, explain how you solved 10 times 4 thousands. Use a place value chart to support your explanation. So how would we solve 10 times 4 thousands? Can we use a place value chart? Let's go ahead and draw one. And you'll notice sometimes when I'm drawing a place value chart really quickly, I'll just use abbreviations. I'm going to go ahead and fill this one out since I'm explaining. Ones, tens, hundreds, I'm going to abbreviate that. And then I've got thousands. And because I'm multiplying times 10, I better go ahead and do 10 thousands. All right, so we've got our four thousands, one, two, three, four. So how would you show what 10 times four thousands, how would you do this? Well, when you multiply times 10, what would it look like? Go ahead and show what four thousands times 10 would look like, and then bundle your groups of 10 together, and then let's come back and check. Okay, so you can see that I multiplied each times 10. So here's my original 4,000. Now I have 40,000. And I can bundle each group of 10 and move it to the right. So that gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 10 thousands. So here's my picture. So how am I going to explain this? So I can start by saying that I know that multiplying by 10 shifts the digits to the left. So just like we did have four digits and we multiply by 10, it shifted it to the left. So let's write that. I know that multiplying by 10 shifts the digits to the right. Then we could say, or excuse me, not to the right. I don't know why I said that. It should be to the left. Excuse me. I know that multiplying by 10 shifts the digits to the left. So 10 times 4 thousands will be... Four ten thousands because any time you multiply times ten, you're just moving the digits to the left. So we could go ahead and write four ten thousands equals forty thousand. Because if I had four ten thousands, think of what that would look like. I'd have a four here. No thousands, no hundreds, no tens, no ones, that's 40,000. All right, so remember we're skipping number five and we're going to number six. So we're going to be using our RDWW process, read, draw, write a number sentence, and write a word sentence. So Jacob saved $2,000 bills, $400 bills, and six $10 bills to buy a car. The car costs 10 times as much as he saved. How much does the car cost? Well, since we're talking about 10 times as much, the first thing that comes to mind about what I could draw is a place value chart. So I'm going to start right here with my place value chart. And I'm going to start with ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. So I've got ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands. And I could go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and put hundred thousands, but I don't think I'm going to need this. All right, so let's go ahead and show the money that Jacob has saved. He has $2,000 bills, so he's got 2000 
He's got four hundredths. One, two, three, four. He has six ten dollar bills. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the car costs ten times as much as he saved. So we are basically multiplying each of these times ten. So when I multiply this thousands times ten, I'm going to move these two to the left. When I multiply these four hundreds times ten, I'm going to move them to the left. When I multiply these six tens times ten, I'm going to move them to the left. Now the reason why this works is because remember when I multiplied these thousands times ten, I had twenty thousands, and I could bundle them and move them to the left. So this is just a faster way to show that instead of going through and multiplying each of these times ten, because this is what happens every time. I'm just moving it to the left. So he would have two ten thousands, four thousands, six hundreds, no tens, and no ones. So basically. This is how much his car cost. So let's write a number sentence. So basically what we did was we took 2,460, because that's how much money Jacob had, and we multiplied it times 10. And that equaled 24,600. So now we're going to write a word sentence. How much does the car cost? So we're going to say Jacob's car costs $24,600, okay? All right, now we're going to go back and do the division problems. So we're going to go ahead and label the place value chart like we did before, but then we're going to talk about what it looks like to divide by 10 instead of multiplying by 10. So first of all, let's go ahead and fill out our place value chart. I'm going to pause the video and you label it with, and you label it by yourself and then come back. Okay, so we start with four thousands. We have one, two, three, four. Now when I multiply times ten, I'm going to take each of these and I'm going to make ten times. But this time I'm dividing by ten. So whenever we are multiplying, we are getting bigger. We are going to the left on the place value chart. But if we are dividing, we are getting smaller. So this time I'm going to say, all right, well these four thousands each of these thousands would be equal to ten hundredths. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to change this for a second, and I'm going to make ten hundredths for each of these. So it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But I still haven't divided because these are equal, right? So this thousand is equal to ten hundredths. This thousand is equal to ten hundredths. So each of these are equal. I have not divided yet. So if I took each of these groups and I divided them into groups of 10, then I would end up with these four right here at the top. So when I take these four thousands and divide them by 10, they started out as 100 a piece. So this started out as 100, this started out as 100, this started out as 100, and this started out as 100. If you think of division as the opposite of multiplication, if we were multiplying, we would have said four hundreds times ten equals four thousands. But we are working backwards. Therefore, four thousands divided by ten equals forty hundreds divided by ten, which is equal to four hundreds. Okay, so it's the opposite of what we were doing. All right, so let's take a look. Now, we already did these up here at the top, so I'm going to go ahead and scribble these out. We already did those. Now we're going to do this backwards. So 3,000s divided by 10. Okay, so I'm in the thousands place, so let's think about this right here. So here's my thousands. Then I have hundreds, 
tens and ones. So I've got, if I've got three thousands and I'm dividing, instead of moving to the left, I'm moving to the right. So that would be three hundreds, which in standard form would be three hundred. So it would be the same thing if I'm thinking of ten thousands. So if I have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and hundred thousands. So if I've got six ten thousands and I'm dividing, then that means that I'm moving to the right. So that would be six thousand. So if I have six thousands in standard form, that would be six thousand. And here's actually a multiplication problem that I kind of skipped over, didn't I? So we're going back the other way. So if I've got four thousands and I multiply by ten, what do you think that would be in unit form? It would be four ten thousands. And what does that look like in standard form? Well, if this is my ten thousands, if I have four, then I have no, oh, hold on, that's hundred thousands. If this is my ten thousands, if I have four, I have no thousands, no hundreds, no tens, and no ones. So that would be forty thousand. Okay? All right, so we already did the multiplication. Now we're doing the division. So this is just like what we did in number two, except this time we're going to do two at one time. So if I'm going from thousands, okay, so if I'm going from, if I have six thousands and I'm divided by ten, then that means I'm moving to the right on the place value chart. So that would give me six hundreds. And the same thing with my tens. If I have four tens and I'm dividing by ten, I'm moving to the right, so that would be four ones. So how would you write six hundreds four ones in standard form? Well, that would look like this. So why don't you try to do the next one all by yourself, and then let's come back and let's check it together. All right, so hopefully you tried to you pause the video and you try to do this one by yourself. So if I've got four ten thousands, when I divide it by ten, that gives me four thousands. And when I take my three tens and I divide that by ten, that gives me three ones. So in standard form, four thousands, three ones, looks like four thousand, three. Okay, so now we're going to number five. So we're going to explain how you solved four ten thousands and three tens divided by ten using a place value to support your explanation. So let's take a look here. This is pretty much like we did number four, except we're going to be explaining how we just did the problem that we did. All right, so if I've got my place value chart, and it's going to have to go all the way to ten thousands, so this will be ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. So I'm going to kind of abbreviate here. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and I really don't have to go to hundred thousands, but I went ahead and did it anyway. All right, so I had four ten thousands, and I had three tens, one, two, three. So when I divided them by 10, this should be 4, when I divided by 10, instead of moving to the right like I do when I multiply, or excuse me, moving to the left like I do when I multiply, I move to the right when I divide. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4 thousands. And these three tens, I'm dividing, so I'm moving to the right, and that would be three ones. So now for my explanation. So when dividing by 10, So which way do you move on the place value chart? I know I keep getting it backwards, don't I? When dividing by 10, the digits move one place to the right. <laughs> so
so four ten thousands three tens divided by ten is equal to four thousands three ones or four thousand three. So let's go back and read that make sure it makes sense. When dividing by ten the digits move one place to the right. So that's what we did. We moved to the right. So four ten thousands three tens divided by ten is equal to four thousands three ones or four thousand three. Number seven. So now here we have an application problem. So we're going to use the RDWW process. So last year the apple orchard experienced a drought and did not produce many apples. But this year the apple orchard produced 45,000 Granny Smith apples and 900 Red Delicious apples, which is 10 times as many apples as last year. How many apples did the orchard produce last year? So I'm hearing this 10 times as many. So since we've been using place value charts, I'm thinking that we can use a place value chart here. So I've got thousands, but this is 45,000. And then I've got 900. So I know I'm going to have to have my ones. I'm going to need tens. I'm going to need hundreds. I'm going to need thousands. And I'm going to go ahead and do ten thousands here. Okay, so if I have forty-five thousand, would I put forty-five in this place value chart? I wouldn't, right? Because forty thousands is the same thing as four ten thousands. So I've got four ten thousands, and I've got five thousands, and then nine hundred. And this is 10 times as many as last year. So how many apples did the orchard produce last year? So if this is 10 times as many as last year, did last year produce more or less? Well, last year produced less. So I'm not going to go to the left because that's going to make my numbers bigger. If I want to know how much they produced last year, I'm going to have to divide these numbers by 10. So I'm going to divide each of these digits by 10. So when I divide 4 ten thousands by 10, that gives me 4 thousands. 5 thousand divided by 10 gives me 5 hundreds. 9 thousand divided by 10 gives me 9 tens. And then I still would have 0 ones. So let's think about what would my number sentence look like because I'm going to write a number sentence. I basically took 4,000, or excuse me, 45,900, and I divided it by 10, and that gave me 4,590. So now I'm ready to write my word sentence. How many apples did the orchard produce last year? The orchard produced. 4,590 apples last year. Okay, all right, moving right along. Last problem. Oops, excuse me, problem eight. Okay, planet Ruba has a population of one million aliens. I was like, planet Ruba? Planet Zamba has 100,000 aliens. How many more aliens does planet Roomba have than planet Zamba? Okay, so I just read it. Now I'm going to draw something. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my place value chart. So I'm going to, have to go all the way to the millions. So I've got ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions. So I'm going to go ahead and write these in. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and millions. Okay, 
So planet Ruba has 1 million. So I'm going to go ahead and label this Ruba. I think I'm saying that wrong. Has 1 million. So no hundred thousands, no thousands, no one. So they've got a million. These are commas. All right, and then planet Zomba has 100,000 aliens. So they have 100,000, no ten thousands, no thousands, no hundreds, no tens, no ones. So how many more aliens does planet Ruba have than planet Zomba? So what kind of problem would that be? What would I have to do here to solve this problem? Well, it's a subtraction problem, isn't it? I've got 1 million minus 100,000. What would that be? Well, that would be 900,000, right? So, how many more aliens does planet Ruba have than planet Zomba? Planet Ruba has 900,000 more aliens. And then B is right down here and it says write a sentence to compare the populations for each planet using the words 10 times as many. So which of these has the most? Well that would be Ruba. So if I have everything is the same in these numbers except if you'll notice I have a 1 in the hundred thousands for Zombas and a 1 in the millions place for Ruba. So how would I write a number sentence to say which one has 10 times as many? Well, hopefully you said Ruba has 10 times as many aliens as planet Zomba. Okay, so we were learning all about place value digits have 10 times as much as the number to the right. So this millions has 10 times as much as this thousands. Thousands, or excuse me, hundred thousands. Hundred thousands are 10 times as much as 10 thousands. And 10 thousands are 10 times as much as thousands. So when you multiply a number times 10, you're basically just moving it to the left on the place value chart. And we also learned that you can use that for division also, except instead of moving to the left on the place value chart, when you like when you multiply, when you divide, you actually move to the right.